Good morning. Just to let everyone know that Major Ian's covering meetings in Darlington, so that'll save about 100 questions to Sandy after. He's fine. He's covering meetings over in Darlington. A final call for anyone that hasn't given me your stats, your numbers. I need to get them submitted in the next week or so. There's only one section that hasn't. If they can just give me them, that would be great. Thank you very much. This coming week, connect with Knit and Natter. Come along on a Wednesday at 10.30 if you're free and available. Join in a bit of fellowship. You can do mostly Natter, mostly Knit. It's up to you, but there's an opportunity there to share fellowship with each other every Wednesday. House groups were announced last week, and there's a good number of people that have signed up. But we've got about 1.5 groups. So we've either got one house that's going to be bursting, or we're going to have a house that's half empty. So if anyone would like to join one of the house groups, it's looking at starting on Monday the 12th, uh, a bit of a Bible fellowship to be sharing there. So if you are thinking about joining, let Sandy know as soon as you can after the meeting, and we can get that second group set up and running. On Sundays in the coming weeks, uh, Sunday the 11th, next Sunday, the NCD health team will be giving a little bit of an update. N uh, NCD sort of goes through cycles, so it kind of goes quiet for a while, and then all of a sudden, everyone's talking about it again. So there'll be a little bit of review as to where we've been, where we are, and where we're going next Sunday. And in two weeks after that, on the 25th, we'll be doing a, another survey, a short survey. So a short meeting opportunity for everyone to, uh, to fill out a survey form. There'll almost certainly be cake, so uh, make sure you hang around and put that down to be here on Sunday the 25th. In between those two, we have Father's Day on the 18th of June and the dedication of Summer Grand, so an opportunity there to share and welcome people into our fellowship. Jumping forward a little bit into July, first week of July is our YP an uh, anniversary and gift day. So if you're not familiar with it, we have our YP anniversary celebrating our youth and at the same time we have a gift day so an opportunity to financially contribute towards supporting the youth of the course so a great meeting that will be had then led by 13 plus so we look forward to that finally the flowers this morning are from liz and paul to celebrate their 18th wedding anniversary so congratulations there and we hope you enjoy those thank you, thank you. good morning everyone and welcome to our Care of the Environment Family Service. Now, I don't know whether you know, but if you're familiar with the Salvation Army's mission values, um, one of them actually says that we will be good carers of God's creation. I don't know whether you think we should be anyway, or whether you, we, it should be as a mission value, but today we're going to be looking at how we care for the environment and how can we can make this church a more greener church, more eco-friendly. But the psalmist says, praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all of my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. And why do we do that? Because he is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. And so we're going to start by standing and singing all creatures of our God and King. I'm sorry, YP Bam, there's five verses. I think there's five verses, yeah. We'll go straight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll stop at verse three. When we get to verse three, somebody shout the words of verse three out. They'll have a quick breather and then we'll do the last. How does that sound? Okay, we'll stand together. <laughs>
The Bible reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. And it's entitled, The Supremacy of the Son of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. And He is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything we might have, he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Amen. The Bible says that God created the world and saw that it was good. God breathed life into man and placed him in the garden to work it and to care for it. God loved all that he had created and you and I are made in God's image. So therefore, as God's caretakers on this earth, it's our Christian responsibility to care for the environment, the visible and the invisible. Now, it's a known fact, isn't it, that we are living in a time of crisis for our natural world. Climate change is accelerating and creatures and plants are dying out at an alarming rate. The increase in carbon emissions is causing temperatures to rise and increasing the number and intensity of extreme weather conditions. Although progress has been made in some of these areas, there is so much more that needs to be done to limit climate change and to protect our wildlife. Some of this is due to humanity's overconsumption of the world's finite resources. But generally, we're more disconnected from the natural world and its rhythms than ever before. As Christians, we follow a God who created this world and who cares deeply for it. And in this Bible passage that we've just heard, we can see echoes of what Paul says in Ephesians 1, that God's mission is to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. The more we can grasp this, the more, we can f it, the more it can feed into our missional activities. We can't just come to church and praise God through our music and our prayers. We have to do more than that. We need to be proactive and put that praise into action. And this will help us bring a greater unity between God, ourselves, our communities, and the wider creation. And as we move further into our meeting, we're gonna be looking at plastics and making some rain shakers with plastic bottles. We're gonna be planting some seeds, which are then gonna be your prayer seeds to take home, to nurture. And, um, and then we're gonna be splitting into groups and just thinking about ways we can make this church more environmentally friendly and then writing prayers together. And then those ideas that you come up with will go back to core council and we will sit down and think about what can we be doing to make this place a greener place, a more environmentally friendly place to, to be part of. But now as we enter our prayer time, there's gonna be three people reading a verses, then we will go straight into a song and then we'll pray. So the, the next few minutes will just follow on from each other.
And so we pray together. Lord, we thank you this morning for the beauty and wonder that can be seen in all of creation. As you breathe life into this world and into our beings, we ask you to breathe life into us once again. We pray for you to give us the strength we need to respond to creation in a way which reflects your loving care and concern for all things. As we breathe in your love, help us to breathe out that love. As we breathe in your grace, help us to breathe out that grace. As we breathe in your beauty, help us to, be, help us to breathe out your, your beauty and help us to be good stewards of all that you created. May we reflect your nature in all that we think, say and do. Amen. One of the things that um, I miss about living in Wales, or I notice about not living in Wales, is that um, Wales is more environmental friendly, I think, than what England is. And I miss, when it comes to recycling, we had little food boxes and we had food boxes for outside and everything went into separate little boxes. So we recycled our food waste, our plastics, our, our garden rubbish our cardboards, but it all went into individual boxes. And I miss, I keep going now, even after an, almost a year. Do you know in six weeks' time we've been here a year? Can't believe that, can you? <laughs> um, even now, I'll go like that with the food because I was so used to, to getting rid of the food waste. I might write to the council actually and see what we can do. But I'm wondering, how environmentally friendly are you? Uh, do you recycle? Yeah. Yes. Do you, do you, have you got compost in your garden? No, I know some people have. Cardboard, do you put your cardboards? Everything goes in this great big bag here, doesn't it? Then you have to carry it down. Well, we have to carry it down the drive. So I've asked you to bring in a plastic water bottle today because we're going to make use of our water bottles and make little rain shakers. I've already done mine at home in a blue Peter way. But did you know for 19 plastic bottles, you can... Makes one of these, and this is S. I'm advertising now. This is SPS's new recycle range. 
and it's cheaper than the other range as well. But this is made out of 19 plastic bottles. Isn't it amazing what you can do? It's very comfy and warm as well. There you go. But that's another way that we can, we can be more environmentally friendly, can't we? We can go and look. I think a lot of the shops have got recycled clothes labels now. So what we're going to do, I'm on a mission to get to certain points in the meeting by certain times, and I'm ahead. I said if I do too much talking, we'll never get there. So what we're going to do now, if you've got your plastic bottle, if you come to the front, we've got some rice, we've got beads on this table, and then this table we've got pasta and beads. And we're going to make our own little rain shakers and percussion instruments, and then we're going to sing Lovely Jubbly, and we're going to use our percussion instruments that we're going to make. So if you come to the table, get your bottles if you've got them. Do you know Lovely Jubbly? Do they know it? Are we nearly there? The stickers are for later, you can put... Have you noticed the big kids are taking longer than the little kids to make their shakers? So 
do you know Lovely Jubbly? Did you know the song that I put on Facebook? The dog go, oh yeah. Amelia and Paige and Jane know it. Who else knows Lovely Jubbly? Yes, I can see some hands up going up there. You can decorate them later on, don't worry. You'll have plenty of time to come back and decorate them later on. Right. Have you, the, have you got there, Paul? I bet you didn't recognise him this week, did you? Thought we'd got a new member of the congregation. Right, now we're going to use our percussion instruments to accompany us as we sing lovely jubbly. So the words are going to come on the screen. Stand up, we'll stand, you can sing, you can dance, you can shake your brain shakers. Nobody's listening, they're just getting on and doing their thing. <laughs> right, on your feet, lovely jubbly. Are you ready, girls? He gave the mouse its squeak, sharks their teeth, he made the legs that jump, gave camels the hump, he made the kangaroo, and the humans too. He even gave his lips a book for kissing, he made fish that fly, eyes that cry, he made birds that poo, upon his shoe, he made whales that sing, bees that sting, he even gave the cat its furry bottom. Is lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. What a wonderful God we have. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. He made it all, he made it all, he made it all. He made dogs that point, pigs that oink, he made dolphin smiles, crocodiles, he made a zillion things, fly with wings, he even gave his tongue so good for licking, he made things that scoot, things that hoot, he made something smell, not so well, he made a wind to blow, clouds to snow, he even made your knees that are so nobly. Is lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. What a wonderful God we have. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. He made it all, he made it all, he made it all. Okay, now it's over to you. Whatever creature I name, you make a noise for it. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. He made pigs that He made the lions that He made sheep that He made cows that He made frogs that He made skunks that Oh, let me try this one. He made camels that he made snails that snails don't make a lot of noise unless you accidentally squish them under your toes. Ah, oh, please don't do that. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. What a wonderful God we have. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. Lovely, jubbly, all of God's creation. He made it all, he made it all, he made it all. He made it all, he made it all, he made it all. He made it all, he made it all. Well done. Give yourselves a pat on the back for that then. Ryan Shaker's down there. 
You've warmed up now, you're in a good mood, we'll take up the offering. <laughs> to you with thank, for thankfulness in our hearts for the beauty that you give us in everyday life. We thank you for the environment, we thank you Lord for the, the birds, the fish and everything around us and may we be care for our environment Lord. But as we bring our tithes and offerings this morning Lord, we pray that you'll bless them so they may be used to help extend your kingdom on earth. Amen.
Now, before we sing all things bright and beautiful, and you can use your instruments as well, we've got some chocolate eggs that need to be distributed to everyone. Please do not eat your egg when you get it, right? You can eat your egg a little bit later. So I need two volunteers. Who's going to help give the eggs out? Ooh, come on then. Oh, yeah, come on. So once the band have got their eggs, we, we can sing all things bright and beautiful. And then they can be distributed. It's another one with a few verses here, I'm sorry. Just pass it around the congregation now. You can pass it around, can't you? And then. So we'll stand and sing all things bright and beautiful. <laughs> Ladies sing verse 2, and men sing verse 3, and we'll sing verses 1 and 4 together. All right? You're all right, you just carry on playing. Ladies will sing verse two, men will sing verse three, and then we'll sing verses one and two together. All right, all th thanks, Diane.
at the table at the front here, and there's another table in the quiet room, are some bowls of compost, some little seeds, and some recyclable paper cups. And apparently you can put these cups in the ground. They're that, they're that healthy. And what we're going to do now, there's some music is going to come on the screen, a beautiful the staff song to sing it everywhere. What I want as many of you to do as possible is to come and plant a seed. Karen's bought some little packets of poppy seeds as well, so if you want to go and scatter some seeds in your garden, then you, there's some packets here and in the prayer room. But there's sunflower seeds for us to plant. God wants us to work the garden and to care for it. So this little seed that we plant is going to be cared for by us, but also prayerfully. So when you get home, think about someone who you know that used to come to church that doesn't come anymore and put their names on the bottom of your little pot. And then this little pot then becomes your prayer plant as you nurture the seed and pray that God's love and grace and power will work in that person's life as your seed grows. Okay? So, so there's plenty of pots. There's enough for everybody. We'll put some music on and we'll do this. Um, it'll probably take us five minutes, I think, but we've got plenty of time. Okay, Diane, thank you.
So we've got stickers on the tables if any of you want to decorate your pots. Helen Steiner Rice. Can any of, any of you remember Helen Steiner Rice? I'm sure you've read many, many of her poems, isn't there? And there's one of her poems that says, um, two lines that say, Pray prayers can't be answered unless they're prayed. And there's a Jeff Lucas book, I don't know if you're familiar with Jeff Lucas, he's a very well-known Christian writer. Um, he wrote a book called Praying Your Prodigal's Home. It's a really, really effective book. But, you know, there's about 86 people here this morning. 86 more prayers are going to be prayed as we leave this place and as we nurture our prayer, our, our little seeds. And this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to grow his kingdom. And how we do that is, is up to us. We can either be proactive or we can be a little bit complacent about it. But if we want God's kingdom to be grow here on earth as it is in heaven, then we have to do our bit. So get praying and get looking after your seeds. Now, I'm not speaking for very long this morning. There's three verses that I just want us to quickly look at out of the Bible reading that Ian read this morning from Colossians. So let's look at verse 16. God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. It's always important that for us as Christians to remember that we worship not only the God who is saviour, but also the God who is creator, who created a material world that contains God's life breath. God didn't just come to become a creator on a short-term basis either. He didn't come to work for six days and then rest and that's it. It's an inter integral part of God's unchanging character and presence that God's voice in nature is ceaseless and enduring. God's speech is the invisible pulse which ceaselessly imparts vitality to all existence. And our creator God, he built a rhythm and a cycle into creation. It's not static, it's always growing. Look at your gardens, they're always growing, aren't they? Always changing feeding and being fed, dying and bringing new life. And church acts in exactly the same way. It's on a cycle. Church grows, it grows and declines on a 10-year cycle. It grows, it plateaus, it declines. And the way to prepare for those declining years, just imagine years 8, 9 and 10 are declining years where na naturally people take, leave this place on earth and go to heaven and leave church for other reasons. As Christians, to create a healthy church environment, we prepare for years 8, 9 and 10 when the church is starting to flourish. So this is the time now where we will be investing over the next 12 months, 18 months, looking at what the new NCD survey results are when we've done it in a couple of weeks' time, at growing effective leaders, growing new leaders for the future that can work alongside the leaders that are now ready to take up their place in two or three years' time. If we want to experience the fullness of God's love and grace while we're here and help others experience it, then we too need to celebrate, reflect on our creator God and all that he offers and then do our part. Let's look quickly at verse 15. He created before, he existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. One of the early Christian writers said, there are three dimensions to the cross. The vertical, which is all about reconciliation. The horizontal, which is about reconciliation to other humans. And finally, the cross was firmly planted in the earth, which calls us to reconcile with creation. This passage shows Christ as source, sustainer and saviour who came to reconcile and restore and who is holding all things together. Jesus was rooted in creation right from the very beginning, and he embodied that when he came to earth. Jesus shows a deep attentiveness to the natural world. His parables reference fig trees and foxes and flowers. He urged disciples to consider the birds and the, and, uh, the flowers. And in the wilderness, Jesus is described as being with the wild animals. We often think of what it means as Christians to take up our cross and follow him, but how might we also plant this cross firmly into the, his earth and help to reconcile ourselves with creation too? I wonder, are we as connected to nature 
in the modern 21st century life that we live as Jesus was. As his followers, are we following his example for caring for all that the Father God made? Genesis 2, verse 15 says, The Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. In our world today, we're dealing with how we have broken, and I mean how man has broken, polluted, and messed up the world. God's word, scripture even tells us that creation is groaning. Three years ago, during the pandemic, we were forced to stop, weren't we? And during that time where we were forced to stop, something quite remarkable happened. Rhythms of life patterns changed. We stopped and something in ourselves found ourselves reconnected with life values, reconnected with family and neighbours again. Did you find that Sabbath rest was easier? I did. Some people found life easier. They found the work balance easier. And I know it was difficult, and we all have gone through difficulties in that time, but there's some things that were, were better because of it. And for a while, while we were restrained for our constant drive for growth, the earth was stable and it started to breathe again. As aeroplanes stopped and boats stopped and cars stopped, the earth started to recorrect itself, restore itself. Did you notice the bird song in the morning was louder? Yeah. In, in, in Wales, wildlife wandered into the villages and into the small towns because of the quietness. The soil replenished itself and the air was cleaner of pollution and noise. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change recently said this. Science can now confirm that we are guaranteed more intense and frequent weather hazards and for those who have the highest vulnerability and lowest capacity, the greater the crisis will be. It's a known fact that sea levels are rising and causing a number of Pacific islands to be completely covered. People have lost their homes, their lands and their livelihoods. In sub-Saharan Africa, there is an ever-encroaching advancement on the desert and now in East Africa, there's a hunger crisis like there never has been before because where it was normal to have a drought every four years, there's now been a drought for four years in a row. In 2022, more than 2.3 billion people faced water stress. 2.3 billion people. And 160 million children were exposed to severe and prolonged droughts. Plastic pollution has become one of the most pressing environmental issues as rapidly increasing production of, of disposable <coughs> plastic products overwhelms the world's ability to deal with them. And plastic threatens the wildlife and marine species as well too, doesn't it? Plastic is a threat to wildlife when it enters the food chain and the ecosystem, and that becomes, when that happens, that means plastic, microplastics are harmful to us. Our next slide says, asks us to look at three questions. So what, we want to, what I want you to do, I think there's about 86, 88 people here this morning. I want us to get into groups, but Get into groups where you've got one of every colour of the eggs. I think there's four. There's blue, green, pink, or pinky red, and yellow. So get into groups of about eight, ten people where you've got one of every colour. In those groups, I'll give you some paper and a pen. We've got ten minutes now to talk about, think about children, think about the aspects of creation that these colours of the eggs represent. What does the blue represent? What does the green? What does the red what does the gold? And then ask ourselves quickly, are we good caretakers of God's world? And then quickly, after you've answered that question, talk to each other about how we can care for our environment better than we do, particularly in church life, and then write a prayer together. If there's eight or ten of you in that group, write a little prayer together on the opposite side of the paper. So on one side of the paper, how can we care for the environment? On the other, write a prayer and then we're going to read these prayers out loud. And we've got till 10 past 11, and you need to move. And I'll bring some paper and pencils round. Just get in groups of 10 where you know you can talk. Can you include the children as well? They're probably better at this subject than some of us are.
an end to us. So if you could leave the pieces of paper here on the front and we will look at the, everything that you've put down and we will take these ideas back to core council. It may well be that we form a little environmental friendly group and that can be a working group from any age, from like 10 to 90, it doesn't matter, and that can be just a group of people that will just help to maintain the church so that it becomes more envi environmental friendly. And Martin has just reminded me that actually we could walk to the hall on a Sunday morning. Now I know some of you <laughs> will set, we'll need to set out very, very early <laughs> if we're all gonna walk to the hall on a Sunday morning. Rob says he does anyway, but also I've had, I've had a phone call in the week of a couple that live in Thornaby. They are Salvationists in Thornaby, uh, they live near the shops and Thornaby Salvation Army is closing at the end of July. This couple have rung and said they want to come here but they need a lift. They're disabled and they can't get here. If you can offer somebody, if you live in Thornaby area, and even if you can offer them a lift once a fortnight and we get a rotor, can you let me know over the next couple of weeks and then I can get back in touch with this couple and let them know. So now, we are going to stand and sing Over All the Earth You Rain On I. The person, the person that's responsible for reading the prayers, if you come to the front, by the time we sing the end of the song, all right? And you can use your shakers for this as well. Are we ready? Martin, are we getting on the drum? So we'll stand together at the end of the, the last chorus. If you're reading your prayers, come and stand at the front and we'll have them ready before the final benediction. And we'll start at one end of the line and work our way through. Okay, we'll start with you, Bev, and shake your prayers out. Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, I love you. 
Thank you for all the things you've done for me, especially letting the people come to the army. Please help us to look after the world you've created. Help us recycle everything we use. Help change the hearts and minds of all of us so we all look after your planet better and become parents of your creation. Amen. benediction may the god who established the dance of creation who transformed chaos to order lead us to reflect god's glory in creation and may god the holy spirit who hovered over the waters of creation and formed the world from chaos form us in the likeness of christ and help us to renew the face of the earth today and always amen good morning and god bless if i can have your